now, while this week is a very big week because it actually is local government week, it's sort of local government week almost every week of the year because these guys never really stop. And we head on out to the western area of the state and Dubbo Mayor, Matthew Dickerson, good morning, sir. Good morning. How are you going this morning? I'm extremely good. That's right. It's almost local government week every week, really, isn't it? Well, I was thinking the same as you're saying that. I'm thinking we don't need a special week. We're there every week, week in, week out doing things for the community, picking up rubbish, taking away sewerage, making sure the roads are in somewhat a reasonable condition, maybe not perfect at the moment, but we're there every week. Okay, now, um, you, you've had a, the recent meeting, uh, the outcomes of that. Well, look, a few outcomes from that, and look, unfortunately, a couple of bits of bad news from that, and I don't like to be talking about bad news, but I think it's important the community's aware of these. One of the bits of bad news that went through the meeting last week was the notification to the Dubbo community that there's no fluoride in our water at the moment, which we're legally required to do. The Fluoridation of Public Water Supplies Act 1957 says that we must put that in there and it's a breach if we don't. But we haven't been putting fluoride in the water for three and a half years. A major failure to the community. And I have had to apologise a lot over the last few days for this major failure to the community. So that's pretty bad. We're now working on fixing this problem. I wasn't even aware of this problem until about a month or two ago. So it's something that's been going on for a long period of time, unfortunately. While we're on water, the other bit of bad news is that during the drought, the state government gave our council $30 million to make ourselves a little bit more drought proof or drought resilient. And so $5 million of that money was spent on a pipeline from our sewage treatment plant down to our ovals on the riverbank. So that sounds like a good idea to take away some of the water we used to use to water those fields. Unfortunately, they forgot to get approvals from the state government, from DPE, to use sewage treatment water on the ovals. And now we've got the $5 million pipeline built and the state government has said you can't use that water on those ovals. So we've got a pipeline to nowhere at the moment. So two bits of not so much good news in that last council meeting. Any good news? Some good news. Charges. I know you've got some good charges there for electric vehicles in Bathurst. We've got some in Dubbo, but none in Wellington. So there are some uh, uh, grants available at the moment from the state government where you can put in some uh, grants and they'll co-fund some of those grants. So we've put in for six different areas, the Wellington Library, Wellington Caves, Sir Roden Cutler Park in Dubbo, Elizabeth Park where our Japanese gardens are in Dubbo, and then the Visitor Information Centre is in Dubbo and Wellington. So we're hopeful we'll get some of those grants. And it's amazing, not only do people use those charging stations as they're going through an area, as you probably have seen in Bathurst from time to time, but they become tourist destinations in and of their own right. I've stood there at Bathurst while charging my car and talked to people who are visiting Bathurst just to visit the charges. So hopefully we'll be successful in some of those and get some people coming out to our areas in their electric vehicles a bit more. Sounds good to me. Now, the uh, the community strategic plans that are floating around at the moment, of course, you know, always got to be looking into the future. And I take it you, you guys are uh, no different to that? Well, we've just had our 2040 community strategic plan approved just in June. And one of the things that I think councils traditionally do very well is plan for the future. And one thing that a council should do and a group of councillors should do is, sure, take care of the things that are immediate. Take care of, as I say, picking up the rubbish and fixing the roads today, but making sure we've got a strategy for the future and making sure you've got input from the community for that strategic future. So our community strategic plan was out on public display for many months. We approved the current plan, but you'll keep looking at that plan. We don't stick it on the shelf and then forget about it and then turn up to 2040 and go, oh, let's see how they went back in 2022 for this plan. It's something that you're continually revising and making sure we've got that clear direction for the future. And I know just in the time I've been on council, back in 2004 when I first got on, I remember some of the things we planned for that came to fruition over the next decade. And I looked back and went, wow, it was pretty hard to see that we'd achieved some of those things, but we've done them now and we've ticked them off. Our regional theatre, for example, our cultural centre, Apex Oval Development, some of those things that I look at now and I think we've done a fantastic job. In fact, our Japanese gardens, that whole area we've got there now, it's called Elizabeth Park, was just really a very small piece of dirt and a small garden when I first got on a council and now to look at that area, it's quite incredible. So that long-term strategic planning, I think, is something we typically do quite well. Just finally this morning, one thing that really does interest me uh, from your council's point of view is the Disability Inclusion inclusion Action Plan. You know, and I think these sort of plans are, you know, are going to be in the future. They've got to be more and more 
you know, things made available for people with disabilities. Well, we actually got in a bit of trouble with that one. There was a plan created and a committee created several years ago because council had allocated $2 million to upgrade some of the disability access, mainly around our CBD, and put in some disability toilets, a few things. So they formed a committee to help get a bit of direction and advice from the community. That committee ran for a couple of years. The $2 million was spent. Then when this council came along and setting up all our committees and our consultative committees and our action committees with the community, we didn't reform a disability access and inclusion committee with the logic that we didn't have any money to spend. The community reacted to that. They weren't very happy with council for not doing that. So at the last meeting, one of the councillors moved a motion to actually reform that committee. So as of last Thursday, the Disability Access and Inclusion Advisory Committee was reformed. We'll now go out and get some members of that, get the community involved in that. The big challenge for us, though, is we don't have a budget associated with that. So we'll have to work through with those community members, see what's needed, and then see if we can try and get some money, state or federal money, to try and add to those things that we need in that plan. But it was a good example of the community speaking loud and clear about what they wanted and then councillors reacting to that. Yeah, very much so. And, of course, hitting the ground running, really, isn't it, to a certain extent? Yeah, that's exactly right. But it is good that you need to know that your councillors, your local government is listening to what's happening in the community and not just ignoring you because they know everything. Listening to the community is something that I really enjoy doing and hearing feedback. They know everything, yeah, okay. <laughs> Yeah, right. Uh, okay, and of course, local government week is on right now. And I take it you've got all sorts of things happening as part, as part of local government week. But as I said a while ago, I think it should be local government week every week. Thank you, sir. Well, this week, just say thank you to your local councillor. Good on you. Thanks, mate.